there, I'm Eleanor from the KU Natural History Museum and this is Pop-Up Science Online. Today we're going to be learning about symmetry in nature. Nature is a great place to learn about symmetry as most living things exhibit some form of symmetrical pattern. I'm excited to make observations with you and to try a couple of fun activities where we'll explore different kinds of symmetry that you can find in nature. If you picked up a science kit from the museum earlier this month, then you should have everything that you need. If you didn't get a kit, no problem. Just head to our Museum From Home webpage and click on the pop-up science tab to find a downloadable PDF with all the instructions and a list of supplies. So first, what does symmetry mean? The word symmetry comes from the ancient language Greek and it's a mathematical concept that refers to an object looking the same after some kind of a transformation, such as a reflection or rotation. In biology, symmetry is defined as the repetition of the parts of an organism in an orderly fashion, typically on opposite sides of a dividing line or distributed around a central point. Several types of patterns of symmetry occur in nature. Bilateral, also called reflectional, radial, also called rotational, and spherical. Some organisms, such as aquatic sponges and microscopic amoebas, are asymmetrical, meaning that they have an irregular body shape or they constantly change their body shape. However, the vast majority of organisms on Earth exhibit one of the three forms of symmetry. Bilateral symmetry can be found among 99% of all animals, including insects, fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals, and even most crustaceans. In fact, you can see an example of bilateral symmetry in my face. I have an eye on each side, a nostril on each side, and even my teeth are mirror images on either side of my mouth. That's the defining characteristic of bilateral symmetry. There's one pair of symmetrical sides meaning an imaginary line, sometimes called the sagittal plane, divides the animal in half with each half a mirror image of the other. Thinking back to ancestral organisms millions of years ago, the evolution of the bilateral body plan was probably very advantageous because it allows organisms to be more streamlined. In the oceans, being streamlined helps with movement through water. The bilateral body plan is evident in the fossil record all the way back to over 570 million years ago during the Ediacaran period. This is when the first complex multicellular organisms evolved and their fossils indicate that their bodies displayed bilateral symmetry and had a gut with openings at each end. These fossils provide a critical link between the earliest complex multicellular organisms and then animals that evolved later during the Cambrian explosion. Besides these fossil organisms, can you think of some animals you've seen that display bilateral symmetry? That's right, butterflies, spiders, clams, and pretty much all vertebrate organisms all have bilateral symmetry. What about the other two forms of symmetry in nature? In radial symmetry, the parts of the organism exhibit correspondence in shape and size around a central point. You can think of it like rotating the organism in a circle. It looks the same as you turn it. Examples of animals that display radial symmetry include starfish, jellyfish, sea anemones, and many types of flowers. Often, animals with radial symmetry have an odd number of parts like in the case of starfish, because they have five arms, we say that they're an example of pentaradial symmetry. The last form of symmetry, spherical, is only found in a couple of microscopic groups. In these groups, the body has the shape of a sphere and parts are arranged concentrically such that they radiate out from the center. The organism doesn't have any sides, so an imaginary line can divide its body into equivalent portions over and over again. One group that displays spherical symmetry is the radiolarians. Radiolarians are tiny zooplankton that live in the ocean, and they produce intricate spherical cells made of silica called tests. These tests can be really beautiful to observe under a microscope. 
Radiolarians live in our oceans today, but they've been around for a long time, since about 540 million years ago. So their spherical body plan has worked out pretty well for them. Now, what about organisms that are asymmetrical? Remember, asymmetry is the absence of symmetry. So that means the organism's body shape is irregular or constantly changing. No matter how you try to divide it up, you won't find corresponding mirror images or equivalent portions. We can see asymmetry in sponges in the ocean, as well as in microscopic amoebas, which constantly change shape by pushing out their finger-like projections called pseudopodia. Let's try out a fun activity to explore different types of symmetry that you can observe in nature. For this, you'll need a small square or rectangular mirror, scissors, the three symmetry labels from our activity guide, and the eight picture examples from our activity guide. First, cut out the symmetry labels and the eight pictures from the activity guide. Then, place the symmetry labels on the ground or a table to create three different groupings. Use the mirror to find the line of symmetry, or lack thereof, in each nature image. For example, these images of leaves demonstrate bilateral symmetry. The pine cone picture is a great example of radial symmetry. As I place the mirror along multiple angles, the image looks the same around the central point in the middle. And this one, this is an amoeba. I can't find any line of symmetry with this organism, so it's asymmetrical. I'll place it under the asymmetrical label. Do this until you've explored the lines of symmetry for all eight pictures. Once you're finished, you can try going on a nature walk to collect other natural items, such as flowers and rocks, and use your handheld mirror to practice observing symmetry with them. Another fun activity that can help us to explore symmetry is creating a symmetrical sunprint. For this activity, you'll need sunprint paper, also called cyanotype paper, and you can often find this specialized paper at craft stores. You'll also need a clear plastic panel, such as an overhead projector transparency sheet, and then natural objects for designing your print, such as leaves, flowers, and grass. You'll also need a plastic tub, some water, and then plenty of sunlight. It's very important to keep your sun print paper out of direct sunlight until you wish to create your design, so keep it well covered for now. First, fill the plastic tub with water and put it to the side for later. Then gather your natural objects and determine how you want to make your symmetrical design. You could make your design bilateral and reflectional, or you could make it radial and rotational. Thinking through your design first will help to prevent any accidents on your sun print paper. Once you know how you want to lay out your design, remove the sun print paper from its cover and quickly lay out your symmetrical design on top of it. Then place the clear panel on top. You may need to use stones to hold the panel in place if it's windy outside. Leave the arrangement in direct sunlight for up to 10 minutes. Then remove the plastic panel. Take your sun print paper to your plastic tub with water and gently rinse the paper in the water for one to five minutes. Then allow the sun print paper to fully dry. If your paper curls up when it's dry, you can flatten it by placing a heavy book on the paper for 24 hours. So mine came out imperfect and that's totally okay. You can still see where those outlines of those different natural objects were on the sun paper. I hope that you all have success with your sun prints. And if yours didn't turn out perfectly either, you could try again with a new piece. This activity enabled you to make a symmetrical design using a historic photographic printing process called cyanotyping. The color molecules in the paper are sensitive to UV rays from the sun. The areas exposed to sunlight fade due to a molecular reaction called a redox reaction, which is when oxidation reduces an atom's electrons. This causes the exposed iron molecules in the paper to change color and then bind with the paper fibers. 
When we rinsed our sun prints, the unexposed iron molecules rinsed away because they're water soluble. Pretty neat, huh? Using chemistry to explore the mathematical concept of symmetry. Well, I think that's where we'll stop for today. I hope that you enjoyed learning about symmetry in the natural world with me and trying these fun activities. Please share your observations with us and also send us pictures of your symmetrical sun prints. You can post pictures either in the comments or tag the museum on our social media. Thanks for watching and be sure to join me next month on June 19th for a very special episode of Pop-Up Science all about shark teeth. We'll have some special guests from the Aurora Fossil Museum, so don't miss it. Bye-bye.